so this is kind of like a Q&A to set up, <laughs> what is this exactly? This is like a Q&A to close one chapter of my life before I open another chapter, which is really what I'm interested in exploring here on Instagram. Instagram. It's what I'm interested in exploring on YouTube and producing for YouTube and I guess exploring creatively, video production and making and all that stuff um, is in that new chapter. But now I want to, yeah, close a chapter that I haven't even talked about on this platform. This is a little weird, I have to say. Sorry, that's not a pleasant sound probably to hear. The opening of the of the can is I like the sound of can opening. The opening of the sound. Sorry. The opening of the can is probably a pleasant sound. But you know the slurping? Not so much. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's a brewing company here called Dirt Church Brewing Company, very close to the place that I'm staying. And I picked this up because I love getting craft uh, beers in places that I go. And it is the end of the day. It's not even just five o'clock somewhere. It is actually five o'clock here. So I am going to be enjoying my lager while I am talking. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. It's been around for a while, but now I am thinking about actually uh, like regularly or I'm, I'm never good at setting intentions or making them public. So I'm always a little hedgy around my language, but I am intending to explore more video making. How's that? I have an idea, uh, like many other people, to um, yeah, make some videos, put them on YouTube. And I have this idea, or what's motivating my desire to do this is actually a very specific thing happening in my life. Um, this video is about a specific thing happening in my life. This is not like a, I don't know, a vlog, kind of like a follow me around this cabin. Oh, by the way, I should explain. That was a bug. I should explain. <laughs> I am in a cabin right now. Uh, kind of obvious, you can see the woodsy vibe behind me here and the nice brick hearth over there. Um, I'm in a cabin in Vermont. I live in Montreal right now. This video is about, well, you'll see what it's about, but I'm not going to always be living in Montreal, but I live in Montreal right now. And I wanted, um, I was desperate for a weekend getaway. It's March and I wanted to get out of the city and I had a time that I can get out of the city. I'm a student right now. I'm in the master's program at Concordia University and I can't um, always leave on weekends because I have schoolwork to do. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of in between uh, <laughs> a big writing submission and the writing edits and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I could get out this weekend and I took the chance to um, go on a solo one night trip down into the Northeast Kingdom. I say down because <laughs> it's down from Montreal and Southern Quebec where I currently live. But for most, uh, you know, obviously of Americans, it's, it's not down. It would be, you know, up, you'd be going up into the corner. But for me, I went down, down into the Northeast Kingdom and I'm staying at this 
really sweet uh, rustic cabin in the yeah in the woods off you know kind of sketchy roads that in um, worse driving conditions might not even be drivable but they were today so yay and um, yeah staying in this cabin and it doesn't have um, lights and it doesn't have running water and it doesn't have electricity yeah so I guess we'd yeah call that off-grid <laughs> off-grid cabin has an outhouse has a propane heater which I've got going right now because it's a little chilly in here has a propane heater. Um, I've got like an oil lantern that you can't see in this frame, but I'm looking at. And I've got, you know, candles going back there. I wanted to make this video while I'm out of the city because it's nice to practice doing something like this uh, when you're in an environment that nobody else is in <laughs> because it is self-conscious. I feel self-conscious essentially talking to myself. Um, and even self-conscious of the idea of wanting to make videos and put them out there, even though once they're out there, other people will be watching. I don't know. I don't know where exactly the self-consciousness part comes from, but to do this in my home um, feels a little bit more, I wouldn't necessarily be as at ease. I, so I want to get these ideas out because I am about to move. As in, in two months from now, I am moving. My husband and I, I have a husband and we're moving together. Um, so I'm moving and a new chapter of life is going to start for us. I, I feel this new chapter of life is a theme on Instagram. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, binge watching of Instagram channels and and, and vloggers and video creators and there is definitely a theme around like I'm about to you know start a new chapter of life so I'm going to video document it that's a real thing and I am interested in that idea also I am interested in the idea of documenting this new chapter of my life coming up because it's like a well like most new chapters are it's really a very new um, and life-changing experience for myself and my family. And those, when we, when we are, when we are approaching those experiences, you know, at least I think, well, how can I, how can I, um, tell the story of this for myself? I actually like the recording of my life story. So it could be journaling, it can be writing, it could be video. So how do I tell this story, record this story for myself, for my family, and how do I share this story? Because I actually like that also. I like sharing life stories with other people and I like reading, hearing, watching other people's life stories. <laughs> so I'm thinking about creating videos of that when I move. I said thinking of, I'm, this is not like a, this is not an accountability club or something. I'm not like setting myself up for a definite thing. It's an idea. I will see if I follow through, <laughs> but it's a desire. And I've been doing actually quite a bit of research about how to do that and studying video making stuff and um, getting equipment set up for that. So we'll see. It's a possibility that it's going to happen. In anticipation of telling those stories, I want to set the scene for that story. And I guess part of that is closing out the current story. <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay, so I get on here and I'm like gonna close a chapter, um, a chapter that hasn't been documented very much on YouTube or in video. In small bits and pieces, yes, but not a lot. So I'm gonna be closing out this chapter before I try to, or I'm thinking of opening a um, new chapter more publicly or more, I should say, in video storytelling format. So the story that we're closing out is that for the last nine years, my family has lived in Montreal. We're not from Montreal, um, but we've lived there for nine years. And I'm gonna leave all of the like previous um, stuff and all the explanations of how we got there and why we live there, even though we're not from there. 
that's not on this video whatsoever. I've written extensively about that on my blog and I even have some videos about that and I will have links to that. So you can check that out if you want to. We've lived in Montreal and we are two parents and um, you know, middle-aged parents and we have three young adult children. I say children because I still think of them as my children. But obviously, you know, they're, I said they're adults, so they are grown up. The interesting thing, okay, there's multiple interesting things, but one of the interesting things with this new chapter, we are leaving our kids who are um, 21, 23, just turned 23 and about to turn 25. We're leaving them and we're moving to a new place. We are moving um, to be near to my parents. So we're going from one family to the, uh, well, same family. We're moving from one kind of generation, con generational connection to um, a connection with the other generation, with a different generation. I have been talking about this story of moving to Nova Scotia living close to my parents. I have been blogging about it now for three years, I guess. Yeah, three years. I have been, I have another a video about it. I, I'll link to that. So I've been writing about it and, oh, talking about it on Instagram because I'm quite active on Instagram. I've been talking about our move in those places and I've had some questions that have come up um, over the years and in recent months about that. Some of them have been answered in the writing and in the communications on Instagram and what have you. But I thought that I would lump some of the questions around leaving our kids specifically um, into this video. So this is kind of like a Q&A to set up what is this exactly? This is like a Q&A to close one chapter of my life um, before I open another chapter. Okay, so the, the, the big question um, that was asked of me before I started sharing more details of the move uh, with people is, well, why would you be leaving your kids? because I am, we are very close. We are moving specifically for the purpose of being closer to my parents. And we have not lived by my parents. Um, we haven't actually lived by family for many years. I'm not gonna tell that story right now. So we are moving to be closer to them because eventually as they get older, we would like to assist in that experience that of old age and eldership and the care and assistance that they will eventually need in their lives. They're not there yet, but should and when they need that, I would like to be there for that. There is a relational motivation or a relationship motivation to moving, but there's also economic reasons. It, it financially makes sense for us to do this. Setting up our lives in this way supports intergenerational relationships in a way that we have not been able to do up to this point, and that, but that we want to do. We as in my husband and I, and, and my parents also. So we want to have this more intergenerational living, but it's just with the two generations. It's with my parents, who are boomers, and um, my husband and I, and we are whatever the next generation, gen... Gen X, I always get, the, I always forget, is it Gen Z? No, no, that's my kids. So yeah, Gen X and boomers. And so that's the interrelational part um, or intergenerational part. But because we live so far from them, we actually have to leave the, the Gen Z. Yes, we have to leave the Gen Zs, Gen Zers, Gen Zers, Gen Zers. Yeah, we're leaving the young adults, their generation, um, to kind of set up this life that we want to have with my parents and perhaps eventually with the kids 
like at some long down the future. Like that's just, who knows? Like I can't, we can't know what's going to happen in 20 years. We couldn't have seen this move coming up. So I can't, I make no, um, I have, I have no idea what the future holds for, um, the kids and what their life paths will do. But this move is for my husband and I and my parents and setting up a life together for the four of us um, in the community where my parents are. To do that, we are leaving where we have lived and we've actually lived in an apartment in Montreal for nine years and we were all in that apartment together until a couple years ago when our middle child left home. He became independent, grew into adult independence. The reason that we moved to Montreal um, in part was because we could, the kids could live at home while going to university or college while doing post-secondary. So this is a thing that like I in other places it might not be like this, but in Canada, um, this is more common. And certainly for our family, this was the expectation. My husband and I, we have quite a mobile life, um, like a location independent life. So we moved to a city where the kids could live at home and therefore save money while going to schools and a city that had really good schools um, so that they didn't have to uh, leave and go somewhere else. We wanted to make schooling, post-secondary education, as affordable to our kids and to us as possible. And we had three kids. They're all very close in age. And we wanted them to be able to get post-secondary education and we wanted them to be able to do it without acquiring debt if possible especially for undergraduate or you know the basic kind of um you know training needed to start a career yeah so we live in a big city that would allow us to do that um, so that they could live at home and we could provide room and board and they'd have access to like excellent educational opportunities and institutions while living at home. I, I understand the that drive and quest for independence at that age. I think that's also a very cultural thing. So for like Americans, that is just kind of like a given, at least in a lot of American people I've talked to and or people I know or media, social media, um, is just this idea that they're gonna, you're going to leave and you're going to go far away. But of course, my question is who pays for all of that? Like, I'm always like, whenever I see all of that, all of that, yeah, I'm like, who pays for that? How do people afford that? I, I guess I understand like there's scholarships and things and yeah, but between like the cost of the education, the cost of moving people around, the cost of like living in different places and then times three, we have three kids times three and then the cost of even like getting people there and then bringing them back for Christmas and that would not be possible for us uh, to do that in the cultural context in which we live, in which, you know, there's not like, students don't get like scholarships that just cover the full cost of their education. Education is much cheaper, mind you. It's like way cheaper in Canada and Quebec where we live is the cheapest in all of Canada, which is one of the reasons that we live there. Um, anyways, all that to say, the kids stayed at home and that was the intention. That's why we moved to Montreal so they could live at home, go to good schools. And now we're leaving. <laughs> so it's an interesting, um, I don't know, switch in that it's usually the kids that leave. Even if, you know, even if they stay at home uh, to through their post-secondary or university college years, um, when they're done that, you know, and they get a paying job, a career kind of job or something, um, regular income, then they leave home. But uh, we're leaving home. We've had a, a mobile life. We've lived in different places. We have location-dependent work. And in Montreal, we don't own a family home. We don't have like a house in the suburbs. We rent an apartment. It's not like the family place. That's actually what we're hoping to build in Nova Scotia. And 
my parents kind of already have what is the family place and that's the home that we are moving into. Oh, and by the way, I'm not from Nova Scotia. I wasn't raised there. <laughs> so yeah, people's lives, you know, people's lives are complicated and complex and the stories are interesting. So in our situation, it's not like the kids are that it's not like we're leaving the family home that we built and it was like the not the built people don't usually build their homes but you know the home in which the children were raised for the duration and it's like the almost an investment property because that's what housing has become now too you know people it's like an investment we don't have that we are not attached to the building in which we live to the apartment in which we live it was not ever going to be the long-term kind of place. It's been nine years. That's been the longest we've lived anywhere, but it's not, wasn't going to be like the long-term family home. That's one of the, um, the reasons why like leaving us leaving is not kind of as strange. Two of our kids are still in university and we're not keeping the apartment that we live in. Um, instead we are just going to help them with their, uh, they'll find apartments, uh, like roommate situations, you know, Montreal is a city with a ton of students and people are looking for roommates and people are looking to share apartments and what have you. So they will move into other places. We will help them, uh, financially with that during the time of their finishing their schooling and, and then they will be on their own. I guess what's notable or different about this or why people have questions or are curious about how it is working is because it's just not exactly normative. Um, and by saying that I'm not trying to say I'm special or something or like, oh, I'm doing something super unique. Yeah, it's just not usually the parents who are leaving. <laughs> it's usually the kids. They grow up and leave. They grow up and leave home. Yeah, in our case, it's the parents who are like, okay, you kids are grown up now and now we're going to go on to the next adventure. We're going on to the next thing that we're doing in our lives. And the next, not next, but another relationship that we are investing and reinvesting and building and maintaining and taking care of for the long-term benefit really of the whole family. Making this video has been way harder than I thought it would be. Um, I have a card <laughs> where I where I wrote some little things on. Um, yeah, to try to keep it like on point, or yeah, keep it to the keep it to the outline. But I'm never good at doing that. And also, it feels like talking about something that's super personal. Um, because these people, my parents and my children are, and my husband are the most important things in my life. And also like talking about moving and talking about finances and talking about, I don't know, it's very uncomfortable and I don't actually know what all to say and how to say it and what not to say. And I don't even know if this video is going to get made. Hmm. We're going to see. Um, I should say made and or produced and published or whatever, whatever the words are that you use for video production and publishing. I really want to tell this story. I want to tell this next chapter of our lives, this next chapter of my life. It's a good story. It's an interesting story. And there's going to be a lot of incredible visual elements, which make it uh, a good fit, I think, for YouTube. 
or video telling or video videography. Um, but the figuring out what I'm going to be saying and what parts of the story I'm telling, that's going to be hard. And the idea that I had going into this video kind of like fell in terms of how I was going to do this. So I don't know. I don't know how exactly I'm going to do this and I'm not sure how it's going to get edited because, oh boy, is it ever going to get edited, but I'm not sure what it, how it's all going to come together. And this is kind of a funny place to start the storytelling. I feel this is a funny way to like be like, a chapter is ending, a chapter is beginning, and I'm going to close this one up and kind of start a YouTube thing. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And, uh, and I hope to be back. Um, I'm not making promises about timing, but it's like I said, this is a storytelling medium and a production medium and a content creation medium and uh, just a creative in medium that I want to explore. And so I do intend to explore it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.